get notifications, and stay updated every time I post a challenge podcast by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you all, and hope you enjoy. Yeah, no problem. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. I have a special guest who a lot of you have wanted to see on here for quite some time, Kellyanne Judd. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. Uh, sorry again that I was a little late for this. Get yeah, it. no problem. I'm glad I could uh, get you on here, and I don't know if you've heard about it lately, but CBS All Access is like a big thing now. They um, actually got a bunch of shows on their uh, little platform they got going on, and the challenge in real world is one of them. But there's obviously a catch here because when fans were scrolling through the uh, seasons of the real world, they came to a little bit of a stop and a gap in between the seasons, and they saw that uh, real world Sydney wasn't on there, so they were a little disappointed. I know. I'm actually kind of disappointed on that one as well. Um, MTV Australia has has that one, so they have all of our rights. You have to. I, I've had people tell me there's a way to get it here, but I'm not sure. I don't think it's as easy. Yeah, I was, that's something I kind of wondered about for a while because it feels like all the other seasons are like more accessible than Real World Sydney. And I felt like uh, your season, The Real World, at least from what it seems by many people, is kind of like the one, one of the ones that uh, <laughs> still has people talking and they like. So um, I was kind of surprised to not see it on there. Yeah, it was a good one. I mean, as far as The Real World goes, it was pretty entertaining. So was it your goal to get on TV, or was it kind of just like a snowball effect? I uh, no. Um, I always wanted to be an actress. Reality TV is not that, so I never really watched reality TV. Um, and, you know, I got on when I was 20 years old, and so very young for the show. Um, and so it, it, it wasn't, I guess I'd use your uh, snowball effect. My sister was... We listened to it, like the radio station had it on, and it, this is when radio was popular. And they were like, um, you know, hey, MTV auditions for the real world, come on, you know, down. And it was at a bar, couldn't even get in. And, <laughs> and, um, and my sister was like, you should do it. And I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, like, do I want people to see me lose my mind? <laughs> she was like, you should just do it, you know. And I, and I so I, I first went in just to appease my sister. And I didn't really think I'd get called back necessarily. Um, and when I went to, uh, to the audition, I had been partying the night before, you know, and I was wearing the same outfit and doubt I put any makeup on. Um, but I had like the same hair, the same everything from the night before. I don't think I looked wrapped or anything, but I definitely didn't look my best. And, um, and yeah, it was actually not, it was a long process, but it, uh, it felt very natural for me to get on that show. And I remember right at the very end, right before they said, like, you know, you're in. I, I, I was in a fight with my boyfriend. And I'm, like, yelling, you know, just like, Aah! I was losing my mind. And I remember, like, I had this aha moment of, like, no, oh, really? Like, you don't want people to see you like this. This is bad. You're going to be hated around, like, all of America and Australia. And uh, you should probably not get on the show. <laughs> um, but I went. And it was actually really, really amazing because um, you're able to learn a lot about yourself. And sometimes you might not like what you learn. Uh, but for me, since I was already so hard on myself, it was like I actually realized that I was a lot better than I expected. <laughs> it was actually really good for me. <laughs> was it scary then? Like, obviously, going there, I'm sure, had to be a little overwhelming. But then, like, maybe coming back after filming, like, to like I guess you could call it like the real like life right, that you were living before going on TV was that scary too? Oh, cute question. I like that. Um yeah, I think it was scary getting on because I wasn't sure, you know, the first person I met was Kahada. And he has this really strong uh not Texas, I'm Texas, Georgia accent. So I an awful lot of this. <laughs> and he was I, I was like, are these actors? You know, like I wasn't sure if like I was being placed with actors and um and then of course you know you're gonna pick your nose and they're gonna film you doing it you know and and so everything was a little scary and the but quickly like for me at least within the first 24 hours of being filmed you start to forget like the first 24 hours like they're in your face I mean they're as close as they can be it's not like they're on the challenge really because there's so many more people but 
the first 24 hours, it was like, like they're taping you constantly, and you're going, what? Why are they taping me so much? Like I'm wake, I wake up to them in my face, you know, and you're just like, oh, geez, I'm making a sandwich, and they're in your face, and it was ridiculous, you know. But then you get used to it, and you're just like, no, this is how life is. Life is a camera on you. And they start asking you about like every detail of everything you do. Like, oh, why'd you put your mascara on that way? And you're like, really? You want to know about my mascara? You know? And then you start to think you're a lot more important than you are. You know? <laughs> so you can actually see how reality shows for kids is probably really bad. Um, when I got back, it was it was almost like more lonely. You know, you don't have that camera following you around. Um, I would talk about something and not have to look over my shoulder to see if anyone was listening. You know, so so did you not go through like that phase of like maybe just like walking like in your local town and then like people recognize and you'd be like, oh, she was on the real world. Oh no, I did. It was it was constant, and I was in Texas. I was in Austin, so it was a little smaller of a place back then. And uh, you know, I'd be walking down the street and people would be screaming from the balcony, it's like real world, Kellyanne, you know. And it was lovely. Um, luckily, there was. I didn't look as much like myself as a lot of people from the show. So, like, I would be walking with Kahada, and Kahada had, like, this whole, like, hat and shoes and this, he used to wear this choker with a, like, was it a, a bear tooth on it, maybe? And, um, and so he had, like, a whole outfit. And so people would, like, run up to him, and I'd be, like, holding his hand, and they'd be like, where's Kellyanne? <laughs> I'd be like holding his hand. So I think I didn't look the same, like from, I had bangs and I, I got fake boobs right away. <laughs> Not because of the show, it just was a huge coincidence. But, um, so I think that, I think that made it a little easier. So I'd get like some attention, but then I also didn't get recognized too much. And I feel like if social media, like I'm, I'm pretty sure MySpace was like a thing back like when you were on the real world. But like, could you imagine if like Twitter and Instagram were as prominent like as they are now back when you were on the show? That'd have no. been like. I would have probably made a lot more money. Though we actually made really good money because we got paid a ton just to like show up for an appearance for one night, and we do like three appearances a week. Real world Austin get like five a week. That, that was a big thing back when you were on Real World, right? Like, you guys were going to bar appearances. Because uh, uh, people tell the story on here a lot. Like, there was, like, a, I feel like there was, like, a, a bar appearance for you guys, like, left and right. Weren't you guys on, like, tours and stuff? Oh, yeah. And I was, like, one of the easier-going girls on my show. So I got invited to all those things. Then I got all these food allergies, and I wasn't as la laid back anymore. <laughs> so I didn't really <laughs> But and I, I did a lot of spring break stuff where I, I did one spring break where – I would do chugging competitions. I would chug oh, wow. and I do it all day long. And I would, I only lost once, by the way. Guy and girl, lost once only. And it was to this guy, who, I don't know if he's, he made it. I don't know if he's still alive, but he, he chugged hard liquor. So he drank as much meat and he did hard liquor. And he was supposed to meet us out that night and I, I didn't see him again. So I hope he made it through life. But, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I would I would regularly have chugging beer competitions and almost always win. I'd be wow. there house too on the show. So so was that like a tiring like um, not lifestyle but like a um, way of going about things when you were like constantly on the road? It felt like. Yeah, and it wasn't tiring. I'm happy I did it in my young twenties, um, but it wasn't tiring. Maybe it made me tired now. Um, <laughs> No, it was it was great and it was fun. I got to travel constantly and I love to travel and I don't really like sitting still. So I guess I have always had this like impeding doom in my personality where I'm like, oh, it's going to end. And eventually I'm going to have to figure out my life, you know, and there's always like that like gloom over my shoulder. But generally speaking, it was like me being able to figure out what place I'm going to go to next and like pushing for more money or helping people out and, you know, that like, kind of doing both things like because people come to you for advice a lot and it was like they still do a lot of the time but you know that was one thing they really liked so I felt like I gotta show up and drink and party for money and then also <laughs> give people I cared about advice and try <laughs> for me it was like it was pretty easy so, so was the challenge like not even like on your uh, mind at the time before going on to it no I mean when we did the um at the end of the 
real world auditions, they asked us to like look at the challenge and like write maybe an essay about what we think of like the people or something on it. So I knew it was something that was like a possibility. But again, I didn't really watch the shows, right? So I only watched part of Real World Austin because it was in Austin. And I hated Wes. And then I ended up dating him, so that's hilarious. Um, and and um, I watched a little bit of Real World Denver because it was on while I was doing my auditions. But uh, the challenge, I just remember thinking, TJ's good looking, everyone else is a douchebag, and this looks terrifying, you know? <laughs> and I... Right. I always thought I wasn't competitive. I was like, I'm not competitive. I don't like to, to do anything competitive. It's stupid. And um, and then when they offered me to do the first challenge after my show, I, I, I said yes because I was just so scared that I felt like if I'm that scared, I have to say yes. You know, kind of like scuba diving. I'm terrified of scuba diving, but I keep doing it. So I'm like, someday it'll not be so scary. Um, and then... How did he get in the backyard again? Oh, um, sorry. Um, um, and then, so, once I made the decision to do the challenge again, I um, I realized by training, so I was like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to work my fucking ass off, and I'm going to train harder than I've ever trained. And I would, like, I would be talking on the phone with this girl named Robin. She was on the island, and, um, and she... She would always just be like, this person's going to be on, this person's going to be on. We'd all be doing the phone calls, and I'd be trying to figure out who it all is, and I'd be like, I think I could take her. I think I could take her. I think I could take her. I mean, I was literally researching past shows, and like, this girl's scared of heights. This girl's scared of underwater. This girl's scared of this. This girl's a backstabber. This guy's a prick. They were all pricks. So I didn't really matter. Hey, guys. And, um, and so I really did my homework, and I really worked out fucking hard. And um, the only girl that I heard about at the very end, I, I was like, oh, Evelyn's going to be on. And I was like, oh, shit, I, don't, I can't beat that girl. And I remember saying to my trainer, like, like, I remember, like, you know, doing the ropes and, like, working my ass off and him being like, I'm not going to beat this girl. There's no way I can beat this girl. And he was like, you don't have to beat everyone. You just got to beat most people, and then hopefully you don't have to go against them. You know, and I was like, oh, it's so hard to, like, train knowing that, like, no matter how hard I tried, I'd never be better than somebody. In my opinion, that was my mind getting the best of me. But I learned through all of that that I was actually incredibly competitive. And the reason why I never wanted to do anything is because I hated the idea of losing. So really good for my self-knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Two things I picked up there that I liked. I like the analogy you used um, when you're talking about like scuba diving and like being scared initially. Um, an analogy that I was going to use is like, when you uh, said that you were initially scared to um, go on to the challenge and like that's kind of why you did it. It's kind of like when you're young and like there's a haunted house and you're scared to go in it, but then, then you're like, oh, well, you know, everyone else is doing it and I'll just do it, you know? Um, but yeah, and you mentioned Evelyn too. How did um, you and Evelyn become so close on the challenge? Uh, was it kind of just like you guys were kind of clashing with the same people and that's what like kind of brought you together? Partially, yeah. Um, we met on our in-between flight. So, you know, everyone's like doing the separate flights and then we all met. Now in the real world, you're like, we had to hide out in a hotel for like a week and look, well, cause we had to get used to the time change. Um, and no one could leave their hotel. We never saw anybody until you're on the show. Or on the challenge, it wasn't like that on the challenge. You're not supposed to tell anyone you're going on, but then like when you're on your flight, you either run into everyone at the airport on the way there or in your in-between flight. So we met in Houston on an in-between flight to Panama. And, um, uh, sorry, I got really cold and I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I remember like seeing her and like, just like having this like energetic connection. Do you, have you ever had that? someone you just kind of like, yeah, huh. I like them. They don't want to say much. I can tell I like them. And, um, and we sat beside each other and we just kind of like started chatting and just, I felt very comfortable with her. And then as like, we're starting the challenge and Johnny is like talking total madness about her and I'm on like a different boat and I'm like hey Johnny I don't think she'd appreciate it because I, I knew Johnny in a different type of this like I, I met him I knew he was a bit of a silly man but I didn't know he was a complete asshole at the time he's not as bad now maybe he is if he's better at hiding it well he was horrible then and um and so I 
went on this, uh, we were on this boat together and he's like talking all this crap and I'm like, hey, I don't think she'd appreciate you saying this. Like, what's your deal? And he kind of like ignored me like, oh, you're a dumb girl, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and then I stood up for her and then from there, I think she stood up for me and it was like, it was like being on Lord of the Flies. I say that often for the show. It was like the island was full of a bunch of like really fucked up, mentally fucked up people. And probably a lot of these shows are. And, um, but on the island, it was just like so obvious, especially because none of us had food. And, um, and like the biggest jerks were the ones who were in charge, you know? And like, it was weird. I'd always say, I'd be like, you know, and they'd always take most of our food too. And I would say to them, like, you guys realize that, like, if this was, like, a real island and we were starving, like, we would kill you first, you know? Like, we would eat you, and then we'd all feed for a while, and then the next jerk would have to be eaten, you know? So I didn't really understand how, in this community, it didn't work like that, but uh, it was really hard to be the only one who could understand, like, what we needed to do to survive and try to explain to the others. And then, you know, they didn't listen, so that was our detriment. And that was going to lead into my next point, too, is I wanted to hear from your perspective now kind of like what those conditions really like, at least in your case, for the island. Because I've had plenty of stories on here. Um, I know that some of the guys that uh, I've, I talked to, they were telling stories about them kind of like sneaking over into the production tank and like uh, stealing a bunch of like food and stuff. But what was uh, your yeah. island experience so like? And Johnny stole food and then then it was okay here's what's fucked i'm sure they told you this the production would put the production would be cooking their food like six they same time every night like six seven o'clock at night so we'd be starving all we'd have is white rice and sometimes they give us like you know a fillet of a fish that we'd all have to share between 30 people and like i mean it was mostly white rice like girls weren't even shitting by the end and um sorry and uh so it was really torturous already, and then you'd, like, smell all this, like, delicious food being made right around you, and it was just, like, it was fucked. Um, it was definitely a mind fuck for sure. And it didn't even look that bit bad on the show. Like, it kind of looked like we were, like, having, like, a vacay on the show. So it was actually a lot worse. And um, so Kenny and Johnny and maybe some others decided to, like, sneak over, and they did get a lot, bunch of food. Meanwhile, they were still eating our food, too, so they were just double-dipping. And um, uh, then the, the crew found out, and we all got punished, and they had the lights on. So then they never turned the lights off, and so we had to sleep with, like, these, like, bright, like, football lights on top of us all night. So we'd, like, wrap our faces with our scarves and, like, go to sleep like that because they fucked us all. So we were very limited on food. There was really no way of getting food. I heard someone maybe met like a local person and they might have gotten him some food once, but that was just a rumor. I met a monkey. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but no food. Wow. Because I think that like a big thing that people always wonder is like, were these conditions really as bad as, you know, what people say? And I think that from talking to people, they really were, but I'm not sure how much of the last season you saw, but they actually had them living in a bunker. So do you feel like you having been on the island that would have prepared you like more than well to live in the bunker that they were in? I think that if I, I think because I was on the island doing something like that would probably give me so much PTS that like it would probably be worse than like if it was your first time, you know, cause I'd be like, this is actually the worst thing you think it's going to be like doing it once is actually easier than doing it twice for sure. Doing it twice. You're like, it's like Bikram yoga, you know, like, it's not like, oh, wow, I did it once and it actually wasn't that bad. It's like, no, man, after like an hour and 15 minutes, the next 15 minutes is fucking miserable every time. And you know it. <laughs> so, so I would say so it's actually would have been worse. Um, did they get food, though? Because if they did, they were living it up. I'm pretty sure they got food. I mean, it didn't look that bad. It, they had like a uh, like a gym set and everything that a pool okay. like there was no sun. No, there was no sun. No, that I think it was it was in Prague too, so it was cold. And from what I heard, the bathroom broke on like one of the first nights. So like, if they had to go to the bathroom during the night, they had to pull up, put on their coat, go out in the cold, and walk like half a mile to like a porter potty or something. No, that sounds fucking terrible. I think anything where I cannot see the sun is 
is terrifying. But would I choose the sun over food? I'd probably choose food. <laughs> So so now I want to bring it back to Evelyn again, which obviously the following season, you guys facing that elimination, did you know beforehand that she had plans on throwing it or? No, I didn't know what she was going to do. I don't think she knew what she was going to do. And then she literally tortured me. I probably still have hip issues from her. Like, I think that was actually my issues on my back are probably from her. Um, (laughs) Yeah, because she like, I got, I got her down on the first one. Like, I don't think she was expecting it. And then when that was like a startle to her. She was like, oh, you're going to try to get me down? Let's go, bitch. You know? And like, I'm like, Evelyn, I don't think I can beat you. There's, I never thought I could beat you. Like, and I'm not saying I couldn't have, like, in some things. I'm sure there's some things that could have been better at her then. But, like, as a whole, I was never thinking, like, oh, I got this chick. You know? Like, she's got it. She's good. And I, I think that she had to kind of, like, show everyone and herself that like she could beat me maybe that was her insecurities but um or maybe she just wasn't really sure what she wanted to do I'm not sure but no I was not sure she tortured me she made me earn it for sure (laughs) yeah because from watching it from like a casual viewer standpoint I'm just like I obviously knowing how it plays out and then watching it like after the fact I'm like aren't these two supposed to be like best buds and then she's like putting her through all this like torture I'm like she didn't know what she wanted, I could tell. I mean, and there was, like, there was a little... Evelyn hasn't always been treated right, and I think that she wasn't 100% sure if I was a loyal friend, maybe, even after all that time. I think she was still, like, a little nervous about it, so. So you think maybe, like, in the back of her mind, she had, like, maybe that you wanted her to give you the elimination, and then after the fact, you wouldn't, like, be friends with her, or...? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that earlier in the season, there was a little, like, uncomfortableness with, yeah, some rumors that, like, I went around saying that I thought I could, like, beat her or something. And I was just like, dude, that just sounds insane, you know? (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't sound. So I don't know if I mean she was, like, believing those rumors. And I'm sure they were put there from someone, like, conniving, like, Susie or something that was, like, Hey, here's a good idea. I'll just, you know. <laughs> but now, what about that gap, though? Because obviously, uh, the ruins. You took like a pretty like I took lengthy. Off. Yeah, I said no to fourteen seasons. Mm. What What was uh? Were you kind of just like exhausted from the whole uh, thing, and you just needed a break, or because obviously, I mean, we'll get into it later in the uh, podcast because obviously. I've had a story with Isaac told on here with Battle of the Seasons that I want to get into. So we won't give too much away. But aside from that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Aside from that, well, I had, uh, you know, like I said, I only really wanted to do the show because I was scared of it. And I wanted to have the experience. And I felt like on the island that it wasn't a regular challenge experience. So then I wanted to do a second one to really experience that. And it was just these. It, it is really wonderful to see how far women have come in the past 10 years. Um, men don't really talk to us the same way on average that they did 10 years ago. And that's just in 10 years. And that goes by like this. So whenever I'm feeling like overwhelmed about where women are at today, I think about where we were at 10 years ago and I go, well, fuck it. We're getting better. At least we're not going backwards. And, um, but at the time it was really hard. I had to go to like therapy <laughs> afterwards cause they were so awful. I mean, I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've never experienced such crazy awful people and so I think my heart was just a little soft for the show and it wasn't really like it wasn't like I was trying to get fame from reality tv I really wanted to do acting still I really wanted to do writing and I knew that I probably couldn't do acting right after doing the show so I was like I'll take a long break from being on tv at all someday maybe I'll do acting and I'll get into writing and um and then that's what I did so, so would you say like it was more so the people and just the environment or like yeah, honestly, maybe MTV, MTV was um like the way you're portrayed like just women in general because I, I feel like that's kind of a thing too I feel like men are portrayed like in a much different light than women are and like, they get away with a lot more in general life and especially on MTV I think that MTV is doing better since BLM I didn't really see them do a whole lot from the Me Too movement. Um, I don't really, I've never really talked about this publicly, but they, um, you know, they've done some stuff that is 
pretty dishonorable. Like, I mean, it's, it was, it's pretty dirty stuff. And, um, you know, they were in a lawsuit after the ruins and the girl who was suing them won. And it was kind of hard because, like, no one would help out that girl, even though they knew that she was mistreated because they were scared of what MTV would do to them, you know, or the consequences for the guys. And, um, and that was, that was pretty tacky and it was kind of hard to be like a part of something like that. Um, but you can make excuses for other people and other, you know, I did, I can make excuses. So I was like, well, you know, maybe they're not so bad or who knows. And so I just was like, I know it makes me uncomfortable, but I'm, I'll pull away and not really talk about it. Um, and then after I went back and I, I, I watched how they, they betrayed me with, um, some other stuff that wasn't the way it went down. Like, I mean, my cousin looked like he was throwing something that, like, was being thrown by the other team, so we had to throw it. It was – it. I always kind of thought, like, the cool thing about MTV is that they at least don't make up lies and portray people in a way that's not true. And that kind of was how it was in the past. They were obviously kinder to the men. They gave them a lot of ups and things like that, um, the white men. But – um when it came to it, when it came to stuff later, like just a few years ago, they really portrayed me and my cousin in a way that wasn't accurate. They portrayed me in a way with the Anissa fight that was, they cut my words. They changed what I said. I mean, it was, and they didn't even show anything I had. Like I had to write one of my friends from the production was like, what the fuck you guys? Like, is that even what happened? And like, are you not going to like talk about my interviews or show anything? And they're like, oh, we'll give you time at the reunion, which they did, thankfully. But like, no one, no one even barely watches an entire episode fully. You know, very few fans are like glued to the TV, thinking about what actually is happening. Most people are watching all cooking or playing with their kids or yada yada, and so are smoking. You know, they're half paying attention and they're watching just like one clip that you decide to show and make it look a certain way that wasn't what happened. And now, what, they're going to wait five more episodes and then be like, well, let's see if that part comes up on the reunion. Like, no. So, like, on the reunion, Anissa addresses it. It shows, like, kind of what actually happened. But it should have never been portrayed that way in the first place. And it was, for me, it was like, they put my character and my future at, at risk. They obviously don't care about how it hurts other people. They are kind of calling Black Wolf. In my opinion, it's like saying... Uh, Colin, it's kind of like when girls go around being like, yeah, you know, I got raped and they didn't. And then all the girls who are getting raped aren't believed because these girls do this. It's like you're portraying something that didn't happen. And now every time it does happen, you're not making it as easy for those people who are actually getting mistreated. And so it was just, I don't know, it was really dirty. And after that, I just kind of thought I'm letting my name. It's not like I'm an actor who's like, the villain. This is my name, and you're making me a villain for things that aren't even accurate. And that's scary. So, so were there any conversations off camera about, like, kind of how that was um, twisted with you and production or you and Anissa? I mean, yeah. I mean, I had interviews that was on camera, but it wasn't talked about. And, you know, like, sure, I think that I... I think now, knowing what I, knowing what I know now... I can see where I wasn't, I could see where I had room to grow, but it was never hateful. And so it's like, to make someone look hateful, like I was saying something out of hate, when really it's just like I was putting a, someone as a compliment in a category as a whole compliment. It's like, it's like saying all black people sing well. Well, that's not, apparently that's not appropriate to say. Or saying all black people age well. It's a compliment, but you're still categorizing. So I've learned that that's not appropriate. And that's great, because I've learned from that. But for them to make it seem like I was not saying something positive in the first place, I mean, that's just mean. It's not right, and it's, it's not right to anybody. So off camera, we did talk about, you know, what was going to be shown, which they lied about. I mean, they lied about stuff, side note, back when... <laughs> I'll get to that. It's actually kind of funny. Um, but, like, you just don't know. So, and, I, and if, they don't even give you time to prepare. So the ruins, there's a scene. <laughs> In the ruins, there's a scene where uh, my, my friend now, he, he wasn't then, but he's very nice. He's uh, Darrell, was like, um, 
he was calling Wes out because he was dating me and I had been sleeping with some of the cast. Uh, not at like the same time, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're in these close quarters for years on end. You're not hanging out with anybody else I and mean, you're going to sleep with somebody, right? And, um, or I was. And so, um, I'm sitting here, like, I can hear him from, like, a distance, and I'm, like, you know, sipping on my day wine, and, uh, and I hear him be, like, Wes, you can't make a hoe a housewife, and I'm, like, fuck this asshole, like, what, and so I put my wine down, because I have the good sense, so I put my wine down, and I walk over, and I'm, like, what? Who would I sleep with? You know, like, oh, I'm going to show him. Like, who would I sleep with? And I point out every man that I had slept with there. I go, him, him, him. <laughs> Not helping my case. And I go, dated him, dated him. That was an accident. <laughs> and, and meanwhile, I had told my previous boyfriend that I was kind of trying to get back with, like, no, I never slept with that guy. So kind of didn't look so good for me when I'm on TV being like, totally admitting that I slept with him, but it was an accident. And, uh, and afterwards I'm like, Oh no, like, should I like tell the guy that like I used to stay that Mike and Mike got together? Like, should I tell him that this is going to come out on TV and like heads up, I did sleep with him and I lied about it. Like, you know, like we weren't together when it happened. Um, but they were like, Hey, the audio is so bad. Um, don't worry about it. We can't even pick up anything. It's not going to be shown. And I'm like, oh, oof, I'm in the clear, you know. <laughs> but I wasn't in the clear. And it was all shown. And the audio was great. <laughs> and, and I don't really regret saying it because I don't have shame for what I did. But it was like, oh, come on, MTV. You couldn't just give. Oh, and I've been on a rampage. Sorry, I've been keep going on and on. But another thing MTV did is... On an after show, we used to have all these after shows, they had uh, Dunbar kept saying that I slept with him. And I didn't. And the fact that I would admit to all these other guys I had been with, like, why wouldn't I admit to Dunbar? And so I was really pissed because, like, I would call Dunbar to find out how he's doing. And, like, I thought we were, like, kind of friends. Like, I cared about the kids. So I was like, wow, you're my friend and you're going to lie. And I feel like I'm in high school again. Like, when I was a virgin, the guys would always lie about it, too. And I'd be like, I'm a virgin! And so, um, and so uh, I was really upset. And they were on this after show. And they're like, don't worry. I get there. And they're like, we got a great little quiz that we did. And, like, you're going to love it. It's going to be so great. Like, you're so good. And I was like, oh, okay, great, you know. And I'm up there on stage. And it's, like, I think Mark Long is the, uh, is the person, like, talking. And he's like, all right, kill you. <laughs> I don't blame Mark because I love Mark. He wasn't the one that came up with this. And he's like reading the um, he's reading the the notes and he's like, so before you got on stage, we asked the audience like if they thought you actually did sleep with Dunbar or not, you know, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and they're like, and ninety nine percent of everyone said, You did, you know, and I was just like, So not only am I getting lied about having sex with but now you guys are taunting me on TV for the world to see, saying that I slept with this guy, that no one believes me, and you fuckers told me that it was actually going to be good and I was going to like this? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just, I, I couldn't. I, I got up and I walked off the stage. And, like, this is the kind of behavior. And, oh, they also made a page on MTV.com with me on top and the branches of everyone I had hooked up with, and who they related to. So it was a pyramid of fucks, and I was on the top. <laughs> what the wow. fuck is that? So, so that's, that's, the one, one, that's the one time you don't want your uh, face on the front of something, right? I mean, I guess if I'm going to get slut-shamed, it might as well be from a, like, actual MTV production. I, jeez, but pretty terrible. So that's why I don't do the shows anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now I, I, I was going to ask because obviously uh, we didn't see you on screen with Wes again until Rivals 3. What, what was uh, that dynamic like uh, doing a show with him again after all that time having like the past, obviously? Yeah, it was it wasn't too bad. Um, I had been in two other relationships at that point and he was like, I think he was engaged at that point. So um, I, I would say the first like night or two, I was like. 
do I still have a crush on this guy? You know, like, in the past, I'd seen him a couple times since we had broken up, and I was always like, oh, God, you know, this guy's rough. And then the first couple days, I was like, oh, shit, like, this sucks. He's engaged, and I think I had a boyfriend, and I was like, I kind of have a crush on us. I'm in a house. This kind of sucks. And then by, like, day two and a half, I was like, no, no, I don't. Guys, the worst. <laughs> so... <laughs> How, how did that whole thing kind of come about in uh, any way? Because I think you mentioned earlier, like, uh, at the time when you watched Austin, you didn't really uh, <laughs> have uh, two. Yeah. He just seemed like this, like, nerd who got picked out of, like, a hat, and now he thought he was cool, you know? And um, and he does look a lot better when he shaves his head, just a side note. Um, but I, I would say that... Um, it, it was because he had, he told me that he had a appearance for me to do, and he, like, called me up on the phone. Um, well, actually, the first time, I was with my friend at a South uh, Padre appearance thing, and we're all hammered. It's the South Padre. If you've been, I don't know. Uh, you should go. After. And, um, and so, let me see if I have my thing up. Um... So we're at a South Padre appearance, and Johnny Bananas and Wes are at one spot. Maybe Nehemiah was there, and then I'm with my good friend. And I'm like, oh, we're going to – I heard they were at the spot, and we were going to be at the spot next door. And I was like, oh, hey, I'm going to run in and tell Bananas and them. This is before the island, obviously. I was like, I'm going to run in and tell them that we're next door, and they can come party with us. And I come in there, and I have, like, my hair extensions in, and they were clip-ins because that was popular then. Long hair, fake lips. And tits, so I'm afraid of nothing the same. And um, and I'm like, hey, like, it's Kellyanne. You guys should, like, come next door. And he was like, oh, no, no, I'm not a fan of Kellyanne. And I guess he was thinking I was saying, like, Kellyanne's next door. And I was like, no, man, it's Ke I'm Kellyanne. But it was loud. And he was like, yeah, no, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of hers. And I was like, what the fuck? And then, like, I'm, like, trying to tell him, like, well, you're not a fan of mine, of mine, you know. And then he uh, is, like, trying to explain himself, but he's hammered. He's kind of talking with his mouth like this. And uh, and Johnny comes up, and he's like, hey, Kellyanne, you know? And fucking Wes's face, I'll never forget. It was like, oh, shit, you know? And he was like, I'm so sorry, you know? Like, he kept, like, apologizing to my friend. And so we leave. My friend's like, he felt really bad. And I was like, fuck that guy. Like, now he feels bad. I was like, I, I respected him more when he would say it to my face. But now I just find out he didn't say it behind my back. Like, what a bitch, you know? And, uh, but then after that, I think he must have wanted to, like, contact me. Because I was looking good. Even with my big fake lips. And so <laughs> he, he, um, he reached out and said he had an appearance. And we ended up talking. And he was telling me all about his business plan. And how it was, like, really good for the environment. And I was a super hippie. Still am. So I was like, oh, cool, like, let's talk about that. And then we just became really good friends. And I hated Johanna on the island. She was a complete awful human. And so uh, we really connected on how much we hated Johanna. And the rest is history. <laughs> I, I'm still surprised that on Rivals 3, like, the producers didn't, like, do, like, some sort of, like, pan back moment and, like, bring up, like, Cause don't like for as much as like they love their storylines, like I feel like I'm surprised they didn't like bring that to light. They did ask us. They said um, when we were doing the soccer challenge, which sucked. Well, <laughs> 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 soccer. Um, turns out I think that actually is a thing. Um, but blind soccer, I mean. Um, but they asked me, like, before I went in, like, hey, is it weird to go against your ex-boyfriend? And I was kind of like, I wasn't going to give them anything because I wanted to be respectful to his fiance. And so I was like, oh, I was like, what do you mean? We did, like, seven years ago, so no. <laughs> you know, I tried to make it, like, very, like, nah, not weird at all, seven years ago. So, uh, but I will say, I really was pissed at him because he didn't cheat on me technically, but it's up for debate. When he hooked up with this fucking chick from Fresh Meat. Teresa. Teresa. Yeah. Uh, I, I will correct you with the way you say it. Because um, when I found out, instead of him saying, yeah, no, I, I did do that. He just kept correcting me on how to say her name. So I was like, you fuck some girl named Teresa? And he was like, Teresa. And I was like, Teresa? Teresa. And I was like, why the fuck does it matter what her name is? 
So anyways, it's Teresa. Um, he <laughs> did. He did. Wow. On camera. So you, so you guys were, because I think I saw that in one of the episodes when I was re-watching it. Um, you guys were still together on, when, while he was doing Fresh Meat too? I wasn't the best girlfriend. I was young. And uh, I was also in another state, and I was kind of like, ah, you're annoying, and I want to party. And so I was doing all that, and um, and so then we broke up, and we decided to get back together right before he did the show, which I said no to, and um, and my ego, and um, and we had the agreement, like, look, like while you're on the show, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend, but since we're talking about getting back together, um, how about? You don't hook up with anybody on TV because that would keep us from being able to get back together. And I won't like fuck anybody here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Seems fair. And um, and then he did. He did hook up with somebody, and I didn't hook up with anybody because I was trying to be a good person. And then um, he didn't even tell me. Evelyn told me. Oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah. from the. Uh... He was going to tell me. At one of his friend's weddings we were going to. So he wanted to tell me at the wedding. So I couldn't leave, maybe. Oh, my God. And then we agreed. And then I stayed with him. So we, I was like, he said it was just a kiss. Hi. <laughs> um, so he said it was just a kiss. And he, I was like, you know, I really don't want to watch it. So I can forgive you. Because, like I said, I wasn't perfect before. So I was like, I can forgive you if... um. If that's all it was, and I, and I don't want to watch it, just make sure that, like, you've told me everything, because I'm going to find out. That's that booby. There you go. Um, I'm going to find out either way, so you might as well, like, tell me, because it would be stupid for you not to. And he said, oh, I told you everything, you know, and it was, like, episode one. And he was, like, he was, like, uh, my friend calls me up, and she's, like, did he tell you about all of this stuff and the things he said and like I mean this guy was like giving her compliments like oh I can just go on and on about how great Teresa is you know like she's just uh, the show would have to end by how much I like like her and it was just like it was not a damn kiss you know and uh and so I asked him I was just like hey like I heard this like do you want to tell me and instead of being like yeah sorry you know he was like Oh, if you can't handle it now, you're not going to be able to handle it later. Because it got way worse. And I was like, well, then maybe you should dump me because I'm not going to be able to handle it if you can't talk to me about it. And he was like, fine, I dump you. And then I went and party with some A-class celebrity that weekend, uh, first-class flight, within an hour. And then we were over. Uh-oh. Who, who was this uh, first-class celebrity? Can't tell. But I brought yeah. my I remember, like, I got off. My roommate was like, you want to go to L.A.? She's like, yeah. Messaged my friend. And he got us first class tickets within an hour. And <laughs> and then I didn't respond to Wes again. And we were bringing up Darrell and Teresa both because I don't know if you are aware or not. They both just got, like, confirmed that they're going to be uh, returning on this upcoming season of the challenge. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know Teresa even. I didn't know anyone actually knew who she was. <laughs> wow yeah she actually had her, uh, her own gap too she uh this is six years since her last challenge so yeah, she's she gonna... really like the best on the show either right i mean was she yeah yeah she was she was on the same fresh meat as uh laurel and uh car marie so uh, we were just talking about teresa yeah she was uh she was on the same fresh meat as car maria and um laurel so she always was kind of playing like that third fiddle kind of like um role I guess you could say so then now it's kind of crazy to see like her coming back after all this time and now she's currently on and yeah well I'm kind of curious about it because I mean I didn't I've only seen her on Fresh Meat and I didn't think she was that impressive physically there I thought she was okay but not compared to like some of the other characters um but then I think I mean I think I saw her like a glimpse somewhere else but was she known for being, like, super athletic or, like, some, like, beast mode chick? And doesn't she, she... Or did I make that up? Well, I'm sorry, what was that? Doesn't she have a kid? Yeah, yeah she is, too, actually. Very cool. Yeah, she uh, she was kind of, like, known as kind of, like, a like more underrated, kind of, like, under-the-radar type of... Because on her last show that she did was actually... Because we were just talking about it, you and I. 
her last show that she did was uh, X's themed, and she was partnered up with Wes. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like her uh, coming out party, I guess you could say, like in terms of like performance. That was like her best season that she ended up uh, putting up. They did pretty good. But like, they, you know, how like at the twist work, they kind of um, had like one of those uh, redemption twists where like, because I think Bananas and Nani were teamed up that season. They got eliminated and then they ended up coming back and it like screwed up yeah, the game. I did see that. I'm going to turn this light down. Um, yeah, I I was a little, oh, you can't turn this light down. Okay. All right. Um, I was a little, uh impressed that um she could put up with Wes because he is really hard like he does not listen to anyone but himself really like sometimes maybe a guy but like I tried telling him many things where if he would have listened he would have actually stayed longer on the ruins and he just he has such a hard time like thinking anyone else is right so I do give her props for being able to deal with him I'd, I'd be interested to see how she does because I don't know. That's a lot on your body. I wonder if she's been training. I see. I see that Paula has been training a lot. Yeah. You think she uh, she's thinking about coming back or no? I think so. I think that whole uh, Mark's uh, OG thing is uh, possibly getting pushed. For did, did, did you get a call for that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I actually might. I mean, like I said, I don't like the production and everything, and I'd have to find out. Um, and now that I'm talking shit, they might not even want me there, which is fine. Um, but, you know, the last time the actual MTV had asked me, it was a couple years ago, and they said, hey, do you have a boyfriend? And I said, yeah. And they go, is he on TV? I said, no. And then they never hit me up again. So I don't know oh. if they were having, like, some, like, um, exes or relationship idea at that time. Or if they were just like, yeah, you're, you're not single, you're no fun. I mean, I don't drink anymore, so I'm sure they were just like, she doesn't drink, she's not going to fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> so was that, was that after uh, the whole Vendettas thing when you went out there? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. you've been called at, was there like multiple times that you've been called after that? Uh... Times after, yeah. I mean, most of the times I get called, I just didn't get the second call, and then every time I probably got the first call and not the second call, and then a couple times I did say no to the first call, so I would have known if I was in the second call. And then the last two, I didn't even get a first call, which is like the first time ever. And I thought, you know, I'm 34. The only time I ever really got in a fight with anybody is either if they started it or if you're like really hateful to women. I don't drink and I have a boyfriend. So I just figured, <laughs> you know, and I'm not big and strong. Like some people, like I, I'm compound, I'm quite strong. Um, but I, I don't think that I was like that terrifying, like holy looking chick. So. <laughs> but I want to bring it back to what a little bit we touched upon earlier was that elimination with you and Nani. How long was that? <laughs> yeah. So we had a few eliminations together on, um, the one on, was it Rivals? The soccer one? Yeah, was it Rivals? Yeah, Rivals. Um, was I on Rivals? I can't remember. Um, yes, that one, I don't remember how long it was, but the first part for her and I was torturously long. Like, I mean, I wasn't kidding when, like, I was, like, leaning on her being like, let me just take a break on you. Like, I need to breathe. Because we were just, like, we were going at it, and we had no idea why. And, like, I'm sorry, but, like, I am a little girl. Like, I am little. I'm 5'4", double zero. Like, I'm tiny. And <laughs> I can flip some people. I could flip you. I could flip you. Um, <laughs> I could. Um, but I could flip you once or twice. And, like, you have me, if you have me blindfolded and I don't know which direction I'm supposed to go and we're just, like, t boning people over and over, like, it doesn't make sense. And I would have to, like, in order to get some ground on you, I'd have to get low put my big old, I have good broad shoulders, put my shoulder in it, and I flip you, right? Like, that's how it works. You can't do that in the soccer. So, like, she was able to, like, really manhandle me in a way that, like, I couldn't do back because I wasn't as big, and if I did it back, you'd be able to tell. And so that was hard, but it didn't even matter because, really, 
we had no idea who was supposed to be going which way. There's multiple times that I was right next to the net. And Wes has a way higher voice than my partner did, Jamie. And so higher uh, voices carry better. And everyone's screaming in the back. They didn't tell them, like, hey, you guys can't talk because MTV sucks. And so, uh, so, so they're sitting here, like, screaming. I can't hear anything that anyone's saying. And so I can hear Wes only talking to Nani, and I'm just, like, trying to do whatever he's telling Nani to do and do the opposite. So he's like, Nani, you want to go right? I'd be like, all right, so if Nani wants to go right, then I want to go left. Okay, you know, <laughs> like, everything. And, and then, like, you know, poor Jamie, his strong suit, my strong suit was better with communication for him, and his strong suit was just do it, right? So, like, he could not communicate with me, and so he'd be like, go this way, go that way. And I'd be like, I don't know what the fuck that means. You know, I'm blindfolded. <laughs> so infuriating. Um, yeah, it was so infuriating. But the challenge will teach you that you are not in shape and that you need to do more cardio. Or at least that's what it taught me every time. <laughs> um, my dog's barking at me. She's just barking because she hears me making. Oh, she's, she's neurotic too. Um, but, like, now, like, I go to the chiropractor, like, you know, spine surgeon, and they'll be like, you ever got in a car accident? And I'm like, well, technically, I've been in, like, a hundred things that would feel like a car accident on my spine. Like, what Evelyn and I did on the ruins would definitely be the same damage as, like, a major car accident, you know? Wow. Oh yeah, you're, you're you're not holding the rope with your hands. You're holding it with your wrists and your ankles. So you're having to use your structure of your body to like pull. You're not using your hands and your arms. You're using your rib cage. You know, your <laughs> so uh, it was a constant uh, a beat up on those shows. Like you're getting, and you don't see them. I don't know if it's for legal reasons or what. Like, you think you make the show better, but, like, you are rarely seeing the, the like, the pain and the, like, fucked up things people are getting on a regular basis on these shows. For some reason, they just don't show it like they need to. Wow. That's weird. But, yeah, I, I want to ask now, because, obviously, your last show you did, you were partnered up with Jamie, who happens to be Cara Maria's cousin, and she's actually been on my show before, one of my more favorite episodes, and I noticed that you guys are kind of pretty close, right? Was that kind of, uh, did you guys yeah. become friends through Jamie, or before, or after? How did that work? No. Um, I thought she was just the worst on my show. So I thought she was just the worst. She was so stressed out the whole time. I told her that I wasn't going to put her in, and I literally, <laughs> with my cousin, she was like, are you going to throw me in? And I was just, I'm too honest. This show is the worst for me. I, I just cannot keep my mouth. I just feel guilty hurting anyone's feelings, and I say everything. It's terrible. And so I'm like, like I might have a problem, like actually, like a medical condition, but I'm too honest. And she's like, she's like, uh, are you going to throw me in? And I'm like, no. Like, I'm definitely not, because I, I'd rather... Johnny and his cousin go home because then you'll be there at the end and I have a way better chance of beating you then <laughs> you know like I like said it like no I'm not throwing you in because I want to use you as a layup later you know and then she got me out you know and I was like oh right yeah smart you know <laughs> um so she was the worst at that time and then um and she was going through a lot with like Abram and everything it was not a good way to like meet somebody and then I hated Jamie. He was, like, said the worst things to me for no reason. He just seemed like, and he was, you know, dealing with her stress. So, like, I met him and when his partner was someone who's all stressed out. So, like, he was just, like, exhausting, you know. And so, like, when I came on to Rivals, I was like, fuck this guy. Like, if he sucks, I'll just go home. I get paid either way. Like, I'll just fucking go home, make her his life miserable because he could barely get paid. And, um, and then I think it was, like, after like a week of being in there together like I'm not saying him slutting it up with Ashley was like what made me like him it wasn't but it was hilarious and I super appreciated like lax Jamie who was have fun now like fuck it you know like I'm having a good time like I'll do my best during the challenge and I got my partners back but like I'm gonna have fun while I'm here you know and I saw a whole new side to him he super had my back and he was just like a genuinely good friend and person to be around and I didn't think that I could like switch from having so much to despise towards someone to like 
damn, like I wish I could call him right now and hang out with him, you know. <laughs> and so that kind of did open my eyes up towards Kara. And then, um, but I did see, like, even on the show, the first show when I hated her, I still, like, there were times when, like, I would see her, like, in this, like, cute, lighthearted, like, spirit. And I'd be like, ugh, it's just, she's so adorable. I wish that, like, she didn't suck so bad, you know? And then when I got to know her, like, we did a couple, we did an appearance um, in Chicago together um, with Brad. And she was very fun there. And Kyle was there. Eh. And, um, and then, um... I decided to do a road trip when COVID hit and I was like, I'm part-time living in Denver, part-time in California. And so I'm in Denver and I'm like, man, I really need to get the fuck out. So I was like, I'm going to go and get, I rented the RV and took my dogs and I went to Montana and I was like driving along and I was like, I should hit up Cara Maria. I wonder if she's around. Like, I don't even know her. Like I barely know her. And she was she was with her her bae, and I actually knew her boyfriend Polly before, like prior to this, and um, and I actually like Polly. I mean, I don't know all the stuff. Like I, when everything happened with Car and that whole like crazy stuff came out, I was like more like oh fuck Polly, I like Car, but fuck Polly. Um, <laughs> then when Car was like no he's cool and you know yada yada, I was like all right if you like him I like him, and he was like super nice to my dogs, and I always liked him before so. I'm fine with Polly, um, but I, I hit her up and I was like, "Hey, like, do you want to um, do you want to meet up?" And she's like, "You should stay at my place. I have a whole guest room. I don't mind if your dogs are here." And I was like, "My dogs are huge. Like, are you sure?" And she's like, "No, it's totally fine." Um, and she just showed me like the best time, and it was like this like genuine connection right away. I felt super comfortable with her. Um, I honestly think she was one of my favorite people I've hung out with in 2020, like for sure. Yeah, I mean. She made me feel just like a close friend, but also just like kind of like brought this like fire up in me that I haven't had probably since Evelyn in my life. Like, like just like this, I don't know. She just made, like, I felt like I was more active. Like I hadn't been in a long time just from being around her, you know, it was like, anyways, she just brought like a really good side out of me that, um, was a really beautiful change to see of her. So, mm -hmm. um, I think certain people are hard on the challenges cause they're, that's what they are. They're a challenge. Um, and for me, it's like, I probably don't change as much, but that's why I don't win. <laughs> you know, I'm probably like, I'm going to be the same person and you guys can just, you know, do what you do. And then, uh, then there's people who can just turn to like beasts and, you know, go in beast mode. And I feel like that's, that's her on the challenge, you know? So yeah, I don't know if I answered your question because I don't remember, but I love Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say that like fans time to time are kind of like hard on her though because i feel like she's i'd say it's safe to say she's a pretty polarizing figure like there's like i feel like there's no in between you know like i feel like a lot of times she gets like a lot of flack and whether it be social media that i feel like sometimes isn't deserved sure i mean well i think that's kind of everybody right anyone who is popular is also going to be disliked you know, every time, um, but she does, she, she, I, way before I met Kara, I was warned about Kara from people who Kara thought were her friends, you know, like, hey, she doesn't really understand how to talk to people, you know, only child syndrome, you know, like, things where I'd be like, okay, good to know, like, kind of probably why when I first met her, I was a little bit, like, nervous, um, and I, I, I do think that there is some of that, she has some stuff about her that, isn't um maybe easy to take in at all if at, at some at certain times you know um and you have to like be open-minded to the, like the fact that like hey she means well and she has good intentions and knowing that you might actually really enjoy the way she acts but if you don't know that and you know you've been burned by somebody or you you know like we've all been burned by people in the past so it's hard to like not relate what we see like people have told me sometimes like oh you know you really came across like a mean girl in this and it's funny because I was always bullied <laughs> and you know and I don't feel like I was ever the mean girl but I guess I have a tendency that I could come across that way for sure and um whatever it is in me that had acted that way at a certain point that made someone feel that way is triggering them it doesn't mean it's about me it's about them and I'm sure that she has things that just trigger people it doesn't necessarily mean it's about her Mm. Loaded answer. Right. <laughs> but, 
But I think we've uh, come this far without talking about it yet. And this is probably the topics that I'm most intrigued on. And I'm sure the people listening will agree with me is two challenges. Now we've seen that you were brought on location and then both times we didn't obviously see you. So first off, I want to talk about the battle of the seasons uh, whole debacle, I guess you can call it because Isaac, it's told the story on here before, and he obviously probably knows better than anybody. But could you maybe talk to me from your perspective about what? Um, what has what? Isaac told you? <laughs> <laughs> well, from what he told, he told me, me. Um, you guys were there, and then I think that they uh, had you all. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we're all waiting on a bus for like a really long time, and then they pulled uh, what was it, you, Dunbar, him, and Ashley into uh, the one room, and then told you guys that uh, one of you guys has a medical condition, and that yeah. you guys. From what Isaac has told me, he said that he was the one with the medical condition, and then when he got back into the states, he went to the same doctor that cleared him, and then they told him that that never happened, and that. Yeah, so still to this day, he does not know why that happened. It's funny because I think him and I actually had this conversation. Like, he came to visit um, in Manhattan Beach a few months ago. And, like, I want to say we actually talked about this. And, like, sometimes you have conversations where you're like, huh, what did we just talk about? Well, anyways, I think that's what happened there because I don't remember what we had discussed about it. But, um, yes, we got pulled off, and I thought it was me. So I thought I was one with a medical condition because the first I have a heart, I have a heart situation. And, um, the first, which I didn't know about until they're like, um, Hey, guess what? We're not going to pass you this fucking doctor. I go over there. I'm like, you know, swole as fuck looking better than I've ever looked. Like not sexually better. Probably. I was like a Hulk, but like I was beastly and I'm in training and I was like, solid muscle and uh and so i'm like ready for this doctor to be like well you're a specimen you know <laughs> and and she's like you have a heart problem i'm not gonna pass you um i'm sure mtv will find some shitty doctor somewhere to pass you but it doesn't mean you should go people your age who look like you drop dead all the time that's how this woman told me that i had a heart condition and i was like oh <laughs> you know like um Thanks, <laughs> you know. Um, so I, you know, call my dad first. I can't call my mom during information like that. You can never call your mom. It's, it's that would break her, right? Call my dad. Let him be the rock. Call MTV, and I'm like, hey, apparently I didn't pass, and you know that's what they did. They said, oh well, don't worry. We're gonna send you to another doctor. Go to another doctor. It's um, and then uh, it's outside of LA now. It's like in Burbank some really small doctor's office. He barely ran any tests on me. He like, checked in my heart was like, okay, I'm going to pass you, you know, but, um, when you, when you get home, uh, just make sure you go to a, a I don't forget the name of our art doctor, but you know, get your heart checked. And I was like, will do, you know? So when they say like, Hey, there's uh, someone with a condition. I thought it was me. I clearly it had to have been me. Um, and then, you know, Isaac had said, like, no, it's me. And I thought maybe it was his asthma or something. But then he got on later, so I don't know what it would have been. Um, and I guess maybe I didn't really feel like it was appropriate for me to ask if he wanted to share. He would have. Um, <laughs> I think maybe he did share recently, and I was just out of it. Um, but we get there. I'm, like, hanging out with Melinda, who was, like, my total, like, you know, girl crush. And I mean girl crush in, like, a non-lesbian way, but, like, a... <laughs> want to be your friend kind of way and I was like these scenes are going to be sick and um and we would have we would have kicked ass which is so annoying well not with Dunbar to be honest Dunbar was pretty deadly um he, he was but um but we done pretty well I would guess and um and Isaac would have been okay I think yeah him and I Isaac and I would have been sorry and so um <laughs> And so when they tell us we get it off, and you know they're like, "Oh well, we'll figure out your guys' pay." And I was like, "Fuck you! You're paying us everything that you're supposed to pay us," you know. And they were like, "Well, we'll figure that out." And I was like, "Yeah, you figure that out, but I'm also gonna figure that out." And like, I contacted Wes's uh, lawyers. I contacted Wes's mother and hit her up right away and was like, "Hey, they're saying they might not want to pay us, 
could you send me the lawyers that like, he used his lawyers to get everyone more money like a few years earlier? And then they did. And we had the contract sent out and MTV paid us in full. But then after that, I think they hated me a little bit. <laughs> Isaac said that like all you guys came in like you him and Ashley were all in like the best shape of your lives like you guys were like ready to go like did you yeah. guys and that was in shape too but he was just he's a loon so <laughs> did you did you guys uh film like the whole intro because they had like the um intros where they would like line up everyone from the cast and like say we, like the I think we were about to I think we were about to film the intro like no I think first what we do is we usually talk to TJ and we are about to do that. And then they send us out and then usually it's like the next day you do the intro, the next like couple days you do the intro after TJ. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So then Vendetta's years later, you go to the location and obviously you weren't used for that one either. Which one were you more bummed out about? Not being uh, used You know, I think I was most bummed out about the first one because, um, I really did train and, um, but I, I wasn't really in the I wanted to do it. I was, like, in this, like, in place, you know. Um, but I still was pretty bummed out. And then they tried to get me to do the one after that, which I don't recall which one that was. And that's when I was like, nope, I got to take a break. Acting time. And he was like, I could do it. You said I could do it. Like a, for uh, Justin Booth, the producer at the time, was like, but you said that uh, you would do it, like, <laughs> six months ago. Why don't you do it now? And I was like, I got to stop at some point, And I'm stopping now, you know. And then they started adding people from, like, all over areas because they realized that if, like, we said no, they were fucked and they had no show. Um, and I never liked the shows. And then when I finally went back, I mean, it's known, I've talked about it, that DM Brown had, um, she had been, like, doing all these shows. And she'd always be, like, she was, like, my biggest fan. She'd always be, like, do it, you gotta do it, you gotta do it, you know. And I'd always be, like, DM, it's just the meanest thing to do to yourself. Like, why do you hate yourself? Don't do it. <laughs> and, uh. And then, you know, when she knew she was, like, had a very, very small chance to live, she decided to do another show. And for me, it just felt like I was kind of a dick, that I wasn't taking advantage of something that, like, was given to me when someone who wanted nothing more, like, to them to be alive was willing to do it. And so that's why I went back, was 4D. Um, but... Um, it wasn't the, my favorite show. Um, you know, I had, like, many panic attacks even thinking about doing the shows at that point. And, like, I remember telling my cousin, like, are you sure you want to do it? Like, it's kind of terrible. And he was like, and I was like, and you won't get paid that much. Like, your first three, you don't get paid that much, I think is how it works now. And he was like, uh, no, no, I'm in, you know. And, um, and it did bring us a lot closer, which is great. Um I feel like you asked me something. Oh, the second one. So, ooh, sorry, you're going to edit the fuck out of this. Um, <laughs> so, the second one, which one was that that I didn't make it in for? Vendettas. It was Vendettas? Okay. Well, it was. It was Vendettas again that I, I was supposed to be on? Well, the first one was Battle of the Seasons, and then... And that is was the one where you, Derek, and I think uh, that was when they used Victor instead of Corey. Yeah. <laughs> so we hung out with Victor for, like, the first eight hours, and then he went in, and then we got Corey. And I got to tell you, like, I couldn't have asked for a better group. Like, me, Corey, and Derek fucking had the best time in Spain. Like, I didn't regret it at all. I still got paid for showing up. Not as much as I wanted. But, like, I needed the money, and it was, like, this, like I was going through this hard time, and so it, like, was perfect. I got a free trip to Spain. I'm going back as soon as I can. And um, and I convinced everyone. Oh, and I'm with these two hot-ass dudes who are treating me, like, <laughs> kind of her, but also, like, a queen. So I was, like, being treated like a queen sister. Um, and, like, such good arm candy to walk around Spain in. It was, like, me and my two hotties. Like, felt like <laughs> such. And, um... And so we were, like, had a great time in whatever city we were in. And also, uh, Nani's sister was with us because she got sent home right away. And what's his face? Uh, Rogan. Big guy. Rogan. So we had a great time with them. He was, like, <laughs> one night me and uh, uh, what's her face? Nani's sister. Um, Nicole. Nicole. Yeah, Nicole was, like, I don't know. We were hammered. We got in a huge fight. I don't even know what. And oh, it was crazy. And 
Derek, did Derek ever tell you? Have you talked to Derek before? <laughs> not, not personally, no. Okay. He, he had to throw me over his shoulder to date me to bed. I don't know. So maybe I was fighting and then, like, he threw me over his shoulder. It's funny because I really don't fight when I'm drinking or when I'm not. But when I do, it's woo. And so um, throws me over his shoulder. He takes me to the bed. He takes me to his room because my room, he has, I don't have my key. So he throws me, there's two beds. So he throws me on one of the beds. And then he gets out and he tells me how there's, like, fucking, it's wet all down his chest. <laughs> and he like tore them, and he's like, "Did she just piss on me?" And I did. He threw me over his shoulder. I pissed all over his chest. Oh, he handled it well. And um, but then you know he got me back later, not with pee, but was like, "Yeah, you owe me one." And we had to party really hard because of it. Um, but so we did the wherever we were in Spain with them, and then I convinced them all, but not Rogan, to go to Ibiza how you're supposed to say it um to Ibiza to um for like the weekend or something and it was the last like party weekend of the whole you know season and so that was awesome uh, Derek was completely smashed the entire time because he was like super sober training mode and as soon as he, he was getting picked he just got just just fucking part I mean his eyes were behind his head the entire time he didn't even remember show, getting there like, he is literally shows up and wakes up in Ibiza because he's, like, like so fucked up. And we convince him to go when he's fucked up. And he, like, wakes up and he's like, where am I? And I was like, you're in Ibiza. And he was like, <laughs> oh, my God. You know, like, didn't even remember. And poor, like, virgin Corey is, like, just hanging out with these devil people. And, um, and so then we're there. And I try to convince them all to go to um, Barcelona with me afterwards. But we did. We had a crazy night. Like, we were, like, I forget. I'm not good at remembering things, especially names of people and DJs. But, like, some very famous DJ. It was the last night, and we partied ass. Like, I mean, like, fully raged the entire time. I can't remember who it was, but someone good. And then, yes, though, maybe. And then, um, and then I went to Barcelona with Nicole. And then Nicole went home after like a day or two, and then I just kind of traveled around for a little bit by myself, and then I came home. So, oh. yeah, it was good. So, so would you? Were you like uh, maybe excited to do that second one that you didn't get onto, that most recent one of Vendettas, or were you kind of just like, uh, you know, I'll accept I and like? For it, I wasn't even training. Like I was, I like, I got sick the last couple of years with uh, heavy metal poisoning, and so. This is right before I got super sick, but I was already kind of feeling, like, off. And so I wasn't training as hard as I used to. And then, like, right after that is when I found out I had heavy metal poisoning. And I was, like, bedridden for almost two years until recently. So I'm, like, just starting to work out again. And when I say just starting, I mean, like, I'm thinking about working out again. And um, and, <laughs> and so, um, but it started in here. Um, and so it, it, I wasn't really disappointed because... I guess I was like, my, oh my, my butt hurt a little bit, you know, like, really, you chose all these kids who, like, don't even live up to, like, how I saw myself, and then you don't choose me, and I'm right here, uh, you know, like, my ego was burned, but no, not, I didn't care. <laughs> so, so would you say, like, that challenge chapter for Kellyanne is, like, all oh, but, um, gone. closed? Yeah, it's gone. I mean, I would do, like, maybe, like, a mini challenge. You know, like a champs versus stars, yeah. like a spinoff. Yeah, or you know, like honestly, they didn't let us eat what we want to eat. They kept telling, "I don't eat pork," and they kept being like, "That's not pork; it's beef." And then I eat it, and it'd be like, "This is delicious." And they'd be like, "Oh, that's pork." And I'd be like, "You told me it wasn't," you know. <laughs> so like, I just think the freedom is really important. Like, I don't like, I don't want to torture myself. Now that's a million dollars, there's a higher chance, but. They'd have to have, like, an adult version. I can't be hanging out with, like, 22-year-olds. That's why I'm surprised that Theresa's, like, interested in doing it with two kids. Like, I mean, maybe she's a couple years younger than me, but still, like, you're hanging out with these, like, children. You have children. It would just be difficult. Like, I'd be like an adult, you know? Like a walker. Mm -hmm. and, and, and these kids are silly, and they're dramatic, and I don't want to listen to them talk all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. well, let me ask you about, like, kind of these new kids that they're pulling out here in, like, the closing, which is, we talked about it earlier a little bit, how they're pulling from all these uh, networks and shows. 
what's your thoughts on them pulling from like um because now i mean i'll ask you because it's actually crazy i talked about it on here a bunch of times they actually for this uh coming season they actually pulled someone from america's got talent a singer (laughs) yeah i I don't know where they're getting their people from and i hope that they're getting i think it's great i think it's great because i think that people are interested and they're getting to love these um reality stars and that they, they want to see more of them and it's cool to see them in a competition setting i think that it should go further than mtv i think more like an abc type thing you know even but um but of course it's going to be as trash tv if it was abc but um I, at the same time i think it's kind of difficult because you have people who are really fans of certain shows and so if you're doing shows from like so many different genres, it might be difficult to find a good fan base, you know? So I'm curious to see how that works out for them. But I love it. I love the people from the other country. I, I love all of it. Like, I, they're hilarious. I enjoy watching them. It makes me feel better when I'm not called because I'm like, well, I'm, I'm nothing like <laughs> you know? A- any plans to uh, watch the season, potentially? It uh, airs a week from Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, last night I watched part of it because Derek wanted me to do a podcast and I had to, like, watch to, like, say what I thought of people. And I'm sure I'll, I'll be open to doing it if it's, like, on. But I still sometimes do get a little anxiety watching it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I guess, man, you know, my ego does still kind of get stung a little bit. So we'll see. <laughs> well, I actually do my own after shows on here. And Nehemiah um, has joined uh- me as well. So... <laughs> the invite's open for you in the future if you want to hop on here with uh, maybe ne- me and Nehemiah both. Then we could, I'd uh, to do it with you and Nehemiah. Nehemiah and I have a good time together. I actually was just mentioning him earlier. <laughs> well, uh, thank you again for joining me. I had a ton of fun chatting with you, and I uh, hope you did too, uh, reminiscing on some uh, maybe old times, right? Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> thank you, and uh, have a good one.